Howdy folks, Incredulous Dylan here. I received a request to make a real tutorial for sticky jumping. Apparently people still had some questions about how it worked, so I'm going to do some voiceovers, present some clips, and talk about different concepts, at least from my perspective, and enjoy! Alright, so if you're here, you're either an experienced player who's looking to maybe spice their game up a little bit with some variety, or you're a novice player who's wondering, how do I sticky jump? How do I rocket jump? How does explosive force work in TF2, and how can I get around in a more efficient way? So for the benefit of the veterans, you know, I'm going to be going through these sections in basically stages. I'm going to change the map with each stage, so feel free to go ahead and fast forward to a new map if uh, you already know how explosive force works in TF2. Now for the new player, I'd like you to consider explosive force like this. Think of it as a sphere. So, well, I guess more accurately it'd be, think of it as a sphere. So the closer you are to the middle of that sphere, the more force is going to be put on you by the explosion. Now, if this were real sticky, you'd be getting hurt more or less, and that's actually something that players will take into account when they're jumping, trying to jump at just the right point to take the amount of damage that they like, while still going as fast as they want. Now, if you're using a sticky jumper or a rocket jumper, you know, lucky you, <laughs> you can do whatever you want because you're not taking any damage. So, we know that we have this sphere to work with now. Now, a couple things to think about about the sphere. How do you use it to put you where you want to go? Well, one thing to consider is the angle at which you're leaving the sphere. That's going to change, depending on how you approach it, how you jump out of it, how you time everything out. And these are things that, you know, you don't really want to overthink. Just kind of try it over and over again, see what happens and adjust. And within a very short period of time, I've seen people learn this in 20 minutes, you'll be air pogoing around in this and that, just because you'll naturally pick up timing that works for you. Now, in terms of specific things to think about when you're sticky jumping, um, I would focus on how you're approaching your sticky and is it on the ground? Is it on a wall, which, you know, puts all that force directly behind you and none underneath? Or is it in the air, which is a little more uh, malleable because you're in the middle of the air. You can detonate it above you to force you down. You can detonate it beneath you to force you up. You can detonate it to the side of you, if I can <laughs> time this you know, to push you in whatever direction you want to go. So that's all a timing thing as well. And the more you play around with that, you're going to be basically traveling, flying around, going in whatever direction you want, as long as you have the timing and the ammo. A sniper is aiming at you, boom, you know. Change directions at the last second, throw them for a loop, going for the kill, that kind of thing. So that's just a little primer. I mean, most of this is just thinking of unique ways to incorporate the idea of the sphere and the force that it imparts, and then using little bugs here and there in the TF2 physics system. So don't be overwhelmed. I'm going to go through a couple things that you can think about, which will really help you uh, streamline this process. Alright, so we've talked about the explosive sphere and how different levels of force are placed on you depending on where you are in the sphere. Now this is important because how you approach that sphere changes your angle, changes a lot of the characteristics of how your next jump is going to go, so you're going to feel that out, but I want to give you a little bit of a head start when you're thinking about this kind of stuff. First off, when you are jumping, I'm going to mention this right off for anybody who's new, you want to hold down crouch at all times and use your mouse in conjunction with your A and D keys. This is called air strafing. You'll see I'm going a little more nimbly than I would if I just kind of... In fact, I don't even know how to do it the old way anymore. <laughs> just don't hold W, don't hold S. Only use A and D in conjunction with your mouse. The same movements and you'll be snaking through the air. And this lets you do a couple different things. Uh, one of the important things it lets you do is obviously not eat a grenade or a rocket, but also it lets you set up your next jump. It lets you respond to situations as you come into them, navigate around the map more quickly, and uh, also once you start getting into more advanced concepts like surfing, it's going to let you approach a surf and set things up in the best way so that you get the most impact out of your jump. So that's just something to consider. It's very important. If you are unfamiliar with air strafing, I would really just try to 
practice, you know, on a private server for a little bit until you get that kind of concept down. Because you want to just be jumping straight all the time like this. You know, it's just so easy to predict and you're not going to be able to move around the map like you like. So just put some time into it. Now, when we're talking about the angling, how you approach that explosion changes the angle that you come out of it. It matters whether or not you jump first over it or just walk straight forward and then crouch and jump in the exact same time as you detonate. Let me demonstrate. You'll see that gives me you more of a, it's a, a sharper arc. It's more of a hop, really. And I use those a lot during combat. Uh, I call them little combat hops. It allows you, in conjunction with air strafing, to constantly dynamically respond to the threats that you come across and position yourself in the best way and avoid incoming fire, things like that. Uh, when you want to air pogo, when you want to have more distance, you know, basically you're setting yourself up for a bit of a run, then you're going to run right up to the sticky and just kind of launch yourself off. This isn't always the case, but if you want to go farther, generally you want to start the explosion off jumping at the exact same time as you detonate. And you should be able to kind of hear it over my mic that I'm doing that. Um, another thing to consider, again, about the angling is that depending on where you are coming out of that sphere, you're going to either pop up, you're going to go more forward, uh, you might even go down if you're in midair, you know, that kind of stuff. And that is important because not only does it change how fast, you know, you're getting to a location, but it changes your next sticky for pogoing, things like that. Um, also, you know, if you're acting a little predictably, like I said, you'll eat a grenade or a rocket, so sometimes I like to bury that up in combat. And once you get really used to it, you're going to start putting yourself exactly, exactly where you want to be after a jump, and angling is a big part of that. So, you know, it's just something to work on too in your uh, spare time. And by the way, I learned all my jumping skills through combat, through just playing the game normally and using a sticky jumper, so don't feel like you got to lock yourself away in some private server. You know, just play the game, have fun, it'll come to you naturally. And the combat side is kind of built into that too, that game awareness. Anyway, that's just a couple of notes on uh, angling and things like that. Now, we're going to move on and learn how to pogo, which I know is no doubt the most exciting thing if you are unused to sticking and all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we're finally here. We learn how to pogo. Two things to consider. Are you going to be jumping into the first explosion or are you going to run straight through? And that matters, like we talked about, because the force from the center of the sphere, you get more force from running straight through. Now, I like to just jump into it if I want to be hopping around at low levels, which means I want to make sure that I'm breaking line of sight, that a sniper doesn't have an easier shot at me, you know, if I want to chain jumps along walls. I run straight through if I'm going to basically need that speed, if I know that I'm going to second on Badlands and I want to get there as soon as possible. It's also better for surfing, as you'll see. It just gives you more of that forward momentum, and uh, we'll talk about surfing a little bit later either way. So they're just two different styles, and they're both two sides of the same exact coin, which is that you are using the explosive force of that sphere in just different ways. And, you know, you'll put a sticky behind you on a wall if you just want to go straight forward because all that force is coming from directly behind you. The timing, the angling, it's all about using that force at the angle and level you want to go where you want to go, when you want to go there. Simple as that. Now, the actual timing for an explosive jump, our pogo is pretty simple. You just fire. As soon as you're in the air, fire again, and then immediately detonate. You'll see that um, when I'm firing, an easy way to think about it actually is to just look straight ahead, immediately fire, immediately detonate, and look, you're pogoing already. You can hold down your right mouse button and it'll automatically detonate as soon as possible. I don't do that because I like to use my own timings for different things, but you know, when you're just trying to get off the ground and prove to yourself you can do it, well, it's about as brain dead as it gets to do it that way. All right, so surfing in TF2. Now, surfing's been around in Half-Life games, Source games, for a long time. And the gist is basically that you can use any incline in the game. Say this ground right here. I just surfed off there. And all I really needed was to have some momentum behind me and hit it at kind of a general angle. 
I mean, you don't really have to think too much about it. If you got the speed, you're gonna pop right up. It's like wakeboarding or skiing or something like that. <laughs> it's just a little physics bug in the engine. You almost, without friction, glide across the surface. So what that means is out of a pogo, instead of taking fall damage or, you know, et cetera, maybe you want to extend your jump, you can surf at the end of that pogo. And if you uh, check out some of my recent videos, I think I do that a few times. Uh, Reject Pile number two, which I posted a few days ago, has uh, like two instances where I surf out of a pogo and it definitely saved my life. So it's just another little uh, trick in the tool bag that you can use to get out of hairy situations. You can also surf off of enemy explosive damage. So if a soldier fires something at you, surf away. You know, just try to take as least little damage as you can. It's like rocket jumping in reverse. All right, folks, thanks for checking this tutorial out. It just covers kind of the basics, and I plan on having a combat sticky jumping tutorial out pretty soon. I'm working on that right now. Lots of tips and tricks. But in the meantime, just feel free to like and subscribe, and have a wonderful evening.